Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Welcome to the weekend gardening vlog. This one is not gonna be too terribly packed because I only have one day off this week, or hopefully I have one day off this week. It's been insanely busy at work, and I've just been working a lot of hours, and so I haven't had time to do a tremendous amount of stuff but it is kind of a big day. If you remember a while back, I can't remember which video, but I will post that video right there. Uh, we got a batch of baby chicks, some meat, chi meat birds, and we need to get those things out of the garage. I know that's not a gardening thing, but it is kind of important <clears throat> uh, for the homestead, and that's kind of what this channel is all about. So I'm gonna show you that process. It's a pretty simple process because I have most of the infrastructure there, but I'll go ahead and show you that, and I'll show you how big they are and all of that kind of fun stuff. And then we also, we have been hardening off tomatoes all week with the plans of planting them yesterday. <laughs> but uh, I worked all day yesterday, so that didn't actually happen. So we're just gonna have to continue we're just going to have to continue with my son and my husband have been helping me get those things hardened off and out in and out of the greenhouse because I've just been working crazy late hours. So hopefully they will be on board for helping me with one more week with that. And then, yeah, and then I'm going to be up potting some more tomatoes. I might be planting some stuff and we'll just see what the day brings us. The first thing that I have to do today because the chicks are in the garage, it is really early. I ended up getting woken up by, by some, I ended up getting woken up super early this morning, unfortunately, and I wasn't able to fall back asleep. So we are out here much earlier than usual. So we have a little bit of time to play, which is actually kind of perfect. Uh, before we get started on anything, I have to show you something really awesome. If you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you know this is something that I have been looking forward to and wanting to happen for an incredibly long time. So Ready? You ready? Are you ready? <laughs> we got some of trees taken down. Uh, this was actually done by uh, by a friend of ours, uh, James Rohrbeck, and I'm, he actually has his own YouTube channel, and he posts all kinds of videos and knocking down trees and stuff like that. He does like hazard tree removals with his friend and or buddy or coworker, I don't know what. Uh, but I will link his channel up here or down below. All that kind of stuff so you can check it out i mean we uh, they came by for a day and just did chop and drop that's all we wanted them to do we just wanted some trees gone chopped down and we're going to do all the cleanup afterwards so i mean they were out here had no issues whatsoever did a wonderful job and we're going to have them back here probably in a couple more weeks to get rid of a few more hazard trees i mean you can see these trees are right next to the house so We've been needing to get rid of them for quite a while, <clears throat> and so we've finally been able to actually do that, and I'm super stoked. And we have some more trees up here. You can see those trees leaning directly over our bedroom. So those ones are gonna be hopefully the next ones to go. Uh, they just came out, to, came out yesterday and kind of got a game plan for how to get rid of these and figure out what tools and things that they need to bring. So hopefully next time they will be able to get those gone and we can sleep a little more soundly because that is literally leaning like really steep i'm probably exaggerating but it's really steep and kind of freaky when it's in a windstorm and you're going to sleep with that thing dangling over your head so i'm pretty excited to get that one gone the main reason we're able to get these chickens out of the garage without much issue is because we have these we have actually two of them i'm only going to need one of them for now i have 40 birds and this will suffice for a week i would say until i need to split them into two different groups and in that time i will be able to fix this greenhouse that was actually kind of torn to bits a little bit with a couple of windstorms that we had over the winter. So the top here, this is actually a converted old, this is actually a converted old awning that, that we kind of wrapped in chicken wire and just, I couldn't converted it basically into a chicken tractor. It's super heavy though. So I don't like using it if I don't have to. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyways, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get this thing set up so we can get those little birdies out here. I got the tractor all set up and basically all I did is I kind of put it in position where I could easily see it from the house. I, I plan on eventually just running them down on the grass over here, but I wanted them to be a little bit closer to the house, a little bit easier to keep my eye on, kind of, I know it's not that much further, but I kind of just wanted them to be closer. And um, so I got them all set up. I got the water in there. I'm gonna grab the food on the way down. And I have these two by fours set up uh, to block any gaps because the ground is not even. I've found that that just tends to work. Not always, but most of the time. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes the gap underneath will be a little bit too big for that, but in this case it works. So, on to get the chicks. That's a dead shrew. <laughs> these cats, it's so cute. They catch these things all night long. 
They catch a lot of them. And then they just spend the day playing with the dead bodies. <laughs> like it's alive. It's hilarious. So as you can see, they are definitely ready and burning to get out of here. So let's get them going. So we caught probably about 10 of them. I didn't actually count. And now we're going to bring them down. And I obviously have to do this in a lot of trips. So you can see we got all the birds unloaded into this tractor. You can see it is definitely a tight fit and this is only gonna be for one week. And my idea behind this is number one, I need to fix my other tractor. And number two, it'll get, the, they're used to being all together in the same area anyways. So this will actually give them a little bit uh, more time to kind of acclimate to the outdoors. They'll be able to scrunch up together and you know, cuddle and get warm at night and stuff like that. So hopefully this week will give them a little bit more thermal mass, I guess you would call it. It's not really cold overnight. It's like in the 50s. So I'm not worried about them whatsoever being out here, but you know, just to kind of get used to the shock from going from the garage out to here is gonna be a little bit, it'll just kind of help them a little bit, I think. I just tried to install the drip tape irrigation to install the main line so I could actually turn it on and plug it in but it's like the punch that I bought just doesn't seem to fit. It says it's supposed to fit, but I just cannot get it to work. And I'm in one of those moods today where I just can't really, I just don't want to deal with anything difficult. Like it's been a really stressful day. So I'm just walking away from that. We're going to deal with that a different day. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the, or not install, but we're going to plant a bunch of our melons and squashes and stuff like that. So I'm pretty excited about that. I got my dibbler because <laughs> I don't have a dibbler so I'm using a spatula but it should hopefully work it's got a good shaped handle and then we're going to cover it with row cover and then that's about all we're going to do with it oh and we're going to water it in of course So I got all of this squash planted and basically what I ended up doing is I did all of the, the butternut and the, the butternut and delicata and kabucha, kind of the ones that I like more up top here. And then I did the medium sized squash in the second row and then I did the really big ones at the end there. Hopefully thinking that, you know, the big ones will have a little bit more room to sprawl down there if I don't end up putting up another row. And I think I've decided that I'm gonna leave this four foot aisle intact. So I have this one here is has um, holes plugged into it. And then this next four foot section is blank. And then this one has, you know, like, and so on. So next thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and cover these with the row, co row cover. And basically I'm just gonna try and protect them. If there should be any any kind of frost, hopefully it'll protect it, but I should be cleared of the frost. I'm not super worried about it. And then also, uh, hopefully to keep it from any bunnies or slugs or anything like that that could damage it while it's still kind of young. So I did water the, water it in, my battery died. So <laughs> I just wanted to get everything finished. So I finished it up and then went got, and got a new battery. So um, I got all that stuff done, I watered it in, fertilized it, all that fun jazz. So now we're just gonna go ahead and cover it up. So we got that one checked off the list and next we're going to go ahead and we're going to plant some of these. We have some loofahs and we have some cucumbers and things like that that we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill up several of our arched trellises that we have like right there. There's several of them so we're going to go fill those ones up real quick. So th this spot should be a little bit easier to plant in than the ground over there. So kind of my thinking is with these arch trellises, I'm gonna plant the things that are supposed to grow a little bit taller. Like we have Armenian yard long and what's that? Armenian yard long, loofahs, uh, zucchino, rampicante. I think that's about it. I have two different kinds of the Armenian yard long. So we're gonna go ahead and fill up these trellises with those. And then 
I'm gonna save some room for some beans that I'm gonna plant in a couple of weeks. I don't wanna go up the trellises, but we're gonna not gonna totally fill it up, but we're gonna go ahead and fill it up with at least these ones. I know I said cucumbers, but it's not not really cucumbers. The last thing that we need to get done today is just watering all these starts in. I'm not sure why the water pressure is so bad, but maybe it's clogged. So while I am watering these in, I'm just really thinking about how excited I am for this coming year and this coming gardening season. We got all of that stuff taken down. Well, not all that stuff. We got enough of that taken down that we can actually have a reasonable amount of sun. So hopefully we'll be able to get enough sun to be able to grow some good solid tomatoes and maybe get a bunch of these squashes going and uh, just hopefully have enough sun to be able to kind of stave off some, um, some diseases and stuff that we had issues with last year. And I'm just really excited. I'm really hopeful for the coming year. Like I said earlier, I, just, I'm, I, I feel like this year is probably gonna be a lot better than last year. Hopefully I've learned enough lessons uh, that I, from mistakes that I made last year. <laughs> and hopefully you guys have been following me along and you can see kind of the, the ways that I'm learning. And maybe you guys will actually will be able to learn from my mistakes as well. At least that's what I hope. And also, I can't, I don't think I said it, but with this watering in, I am attaching this to it and it's filled with fish emulsion. And this is just supposed to help starts grow. And it's also supposed to help to prevent any kind of um, transplant shock, things like that. So I have found it to be pretty effective. These peas are doing tremendous. Awesome. So it didn't work with the kale, as you can see in here. These things are still stunted even from last week, but that I am pretty confident is user error and that I did not harden them up well enough or at all. <laughs> so that's definitely not any, any, uh, any negative comments on the fish emulsion. That was completely my fault. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna finish watering in the rest of these starts. Then I'm gonna go inside and I'm going to eat my last meal for the next 40 hours. <laughs> uh, and then I am going to probably finish editing a video. Hopefully I will be able to uh, finish editing a keto taco canning soup recipe. So if you guys are interested in that, if you guys are kind of on the low carb spectrum there and um, or if you guys just want a really, really delicious taco soup recipe, uh, that one is already out or will be out next very shortly. So uh, it just depends on how much I'm able to get done this evening. <laughs> so I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got some inspiration. If you do, let me know down below. And also make sure you give me a like and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.